Let's see what we got. Prager U, what unites Americans? Now, what do you what do you guys think? What unites Americans? All right. What what unites us? Hamburger. I think that unites us. We we all like a good hamburger every now and again. Hating on Canadians. Boy, do I can hate Canadians. Imperialism, gun violence. I do love my guns and off stream. I get a little bit violent. But Canadians, thank you, Rez. Working 50 hours a week. That's what we call based. The land we live on. I do love that land. I'm thankful for it. As a Canadian, please keep think. OK, we got you, chief. Many things can bind us, glue us together. OK, blame each other. That's pretty hot. We love things that bind us. But you know what? It's time for PragerU to ask the question, what really unites Americans? I want to see what their answer is. Americans come from every corner of the globe. We represent every race, every ethnicity, every religion. So what unifies us? Two things, values and history. Wait, didn't we come from like different? What, what, how does the history unite us if we come from different backgrounds? We all have different history. Is the thing that unites us when it comes to history that we have different history? Is that it? History. Not using the metric system? Honestly, fuck the metric system. Okay? Like, that's the, that's the one thing that I'll fight on. I will, we will never import the metric system from Europe. I hate the metric system. And I'm sick and tired of Canadians and I'm sick and tired of Europeans and being like, Ooh, we love our metric system. Ooh, you Yanks, you don't know how to use the metric system. Like, shut up, bitch. I don't give a shit. Keep your unseasoned food and your shitty metric system away from me. Dude, it's so easy. Um, almost as easy as you getting banned. History. How can history unify us if we come from so many different places? My parents illustrate my point. They came from India and settled in the rural South. You don't get much further away from your ethnic origins than that. Like generations of immigrants before them, my parents, my brother, and I study the inspiring stories of the Mayflower, the Boston Tea Party, the settling of the West, the personal stories and struggles of great American men and women. We <laughs> you completely left out Native Americans there and black people. But, you know, it's, yeah, it got to be that way. Got to be that way. Fully adopted American history as our own. My friend, Dennis Brager, has a special way of expressing this. He says he has two historical fathers. Abraham, the father of the Jewish people, and George Washington, the father of the American people. My mom still makes a mean curry. My parents still practice their Hindu religion, but they're also as American as apple pie. That's because once you're an American, you're fully American. The new city- Wait, isn't it conservatives who always talk- Yeah, he has two dads. I've never had curry before, I don't think. Isn't it conservatives that talk all the time about like, People, especially like Hispanic people coming up from the border and making like little enclaves where they don't, the way they don't accept being American, even if they're like legal citizens or whatever. Isn't, isn't that the whole thing? Like we're going to talk about Tucker Carlson saying something along those lines very shortly. And he's one of the most popular talking conservative talking heads in the country. And I'm, I'm not sure if this really holds up if, you know, if I think about it for more than a moment, do you have to accept that? What, and what does that mean? Like you accept the history. I do know, I think personally, if you want to be an American, you're just an, as American as anybody else. But that doesn't mean you have to accept any like understanding of America or anything, because the whole point of us all being different is what makes America America. Yeah, it's the Latwinks that come up. Citizen from Armenia, Cambodia, Bolivia or Nigeria is considered every bit as American as the great great granddaughter of a Civil War veteran. They share values and history. It's hard to imagine a more unifying idea. And it's fundamentally, uniquely, and gloriously American. In a speech before the Civil War, the abolitionist preacher Theodore Parker popularized what he called the American idea. Parker's recipe combined three ingredients. Only in America did they exist simultaneously. All people are created equal. All possess certain unalienable rights. All should have the opportunity to develop their individual talents. This is not something that only, for one, this is not something that only America has. And two, even if the, even that's like an idea, I guess, in this time, like when has America held up to these values? Are there pregnant you hated abolitionists? Listen, they said Civil War veteran, not like Union veteran, okay? <laughs> yeah, I wish it were true. It's always like, it sounds, it's always, it's literally, it always sounds good in theory, but it's never been, it's never really been true ever, which is unfortunate. I want it to be true, but it just isn't. I, we can we can want and wish for a lot of things, but that doesn't mean they're they're actually there. Yeah, it's the slogan. Yeah, it's the it's the jingle. Shark, you fool! You have the right to in develop your individual talent. Just not eat or have health care. Yeah, listen, you can do that. You just have no right to eat and you have no right to have health care. So I'm sorry if you get like some weird tumor and you know you're not able to take care of it. Whoopsie, rip. Parker, whose sermons inspired Abraham Lincoln and Martin Luther King, believed in one American set of values: 
supported by all Americans and open to all Americans. Abraham Lincoln, the guy who was killed by the uh, Americans who didn't agree with him. Martin Luther King, who had to spearhead an entire civil rights movement against the Americans who didn't agree with him. I don't I don't know how you can sit here and say it's supported by all Americans when these two Americans were like fundamentally fighting against like conservative values in the country. But OK, whatever, you know, whatever. Thanks to Lincoln, King and many others, what Parker envisioned has largely come to pass. No country has woven more people of different races, backgrounds and ethnicities more successfully into a single country than America. But this tapestry is now being ripped apart at the seams. <gasps> no, America's it's being founding ripped apart. What's happening? And also, America, I don't think America is the most diverse country. I think that's Brazil. But I think he, but I think he would say that Brazil is poo-poo. So I guess they wouldn't count as like being the most successful. No, who's, they soiled it. What's happening? Um, the party switched dirt. Yeah, my bad. I'm sorry. But wait, I want to know who's ripping it apart. Who, who did it? Ideals. Who done it? Once a source of shared pride are increasingly depicted as a source of shared shame. These ideals, it turns out, were just a cover for systemic racism and exploitation. I mean, do you disagree with that? What did Abraham Lincoln was mur both both the people that you talked about here earlier, like these these two guys, both of these people were murdered trying to set into place these set of values. They were lit like wars, like for one, like both of these were like on. I mean, both of these were typically race wars, actually, like. It, Martin Luther King less so than like a full-blown civil war like Abraham Lincoln had to go through and both of these people were fucking assassinated for trying to hold up to the values that they said that were supported by all Americans then why did like half of Americans secede from the country to like uphold slavery dude how is it supported by all Americans I guess it's supported by all Americans as long as you don't count the Americans that didn't support it which was like half of them <laughs> okay and it was like I don't I don't know dude systemic racism and exploitation that is a new narrative from the progressive left. It's, but it's just true. Like, I don't know what you, how can you say that like a country is said that all men are equal as some men are literally property. I guess they're like, they're equal, but they're a little bit less equal or something. I, I don't know. Is being sold to the American public by our educational institutions, our media, and now even major corporations. The consequences of this are obvious and tragic. Imagine a child coming to the United States or any American born child for that matter and learning that the nation was created not to promote liberty, but to promote the founder's slave interests. Here's what you do, because people like PragerU and other conservatives have like a child's like understanding of any of these issues. Here's what you do. That sucks. It's important to understand that. And let's make it better. Those guys are fucking dead, but you're not dead yet. Just don't call an ambulance, OK? You're not dead. So that means you have the option to change it. Even the founding fathers were not perfect and the founding fathers made a lot of mistakes and the founding fathers were rapists and kidnappers and torturers and murderers. That's what they were, all right? So what you do is you're like, I take this that they made and I make it better. That's what happens. Yeah, we make America better. That's, that's what we do. You, this is where we start. It should be like a triumphant story. We started off by saying that we have all these values but we didn't hold up to them. And now we get to actually hold up to them. Doesn't that sound like a pretty uplifting story? You get to be a part of like one of the best and most successful projects of bring all these people together and it started off as like keeping people in chains and now you get to be here as more, more, more or less an equal citizen. Doesn't that sound cool? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like we're a shonen anime. You're right. It sounds cool to me, but for the, for the conservatives, they can't have that. They don't like it. They want it always to be good, always to be good. From beginning to end, we always had great intentions. And then oh, uh, hop, we had a couple hiccups, like raping, torturing, and murdering millions of human beings, uh, genociding of Native Americans, women not getting rights until the 1900s. You just, as long as you skim past all, oh yeah, destabilizing like many countries in Central South America, Asia, and the Middle East, as long as we like skip past that, dude, everything was pretty sick. Or that California, Texas, and Arizona were stolen from Mexico. Or that free markets exploit workers rather than providing them with opportunities for a better life. Or a new immigrant being told in an equity, diversity, and inclusion seminar that his fellow white employees secretly despise him, even though they seem to treat him well. In short, Parker's- The thing is like, I, I, don't, I don't like those corporate like diversity training things. They usually turn out shit, mostly because the people who are doing them aren't there to actually make the workplace better they're there to make money which is also a problem with the market but can like can we not like be critical of a system and also like want to make it better 
It, it just seems it seems like so childish to think that, oh, what are you, I can't believe you want to tell people the bad things about things. I can't believe it's, it's called being knowledgeable. It's, it's called being educated. What he's doing right now is screeching about how he, uh, we want to educate people. How dare you try to educate people? American idea has been turned upside down. Instead of an aspirational society, the left sees people limited by the circumstances of their birth. If you're born white, you're privileged. If you're born a different color, you're a victim. The whole idea and it's so simple. Literally, kid, l babies, babies first understanding problems are in the world. <laughs> like, I don't, like if you're white, you probably have more privilege than someone who's brown. Like, typically, yeah. Does this make you upset? Does this make you upset? I'm sorry, baby. A uh, grow up dipshit. I guess the reality of America was that with hard work, self discipline, and of course a little bit of luck, you could transcend your past and make your. <laughs> Wait a second. I like how even in this. Even in this like diagram, hard work is the smallest possible thing. And a little bit of luck, it being the second biggest thing. Listen, with hard work, self-discipline, a small loan of a million dollars from my dad, I made my own future. And that is America. <laughs> and that is America, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I started off in my garage and then I got a $300,000 loan from my rich uncle. And I, with that little bit of luck, I was able to transform it into the company you see today. Anyone can do it. Just ask for some money from your rich uncle. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is happening? It's like all of those uh, articles that are coming out like 15 year old CEO. How did she do it? So I had a really big idea and then my parents were like, Here's two two point five million dollars, and with a and with hard work and discipline, I turned that two point five million dollars into the company that you've never heard of today. <laughs> okay, all right, sure, I guess. I put up my my grandma passed away and endowed to me thirty thousand dollars, and I put it all into Dogecoin. Here's how you can become a millionaire today. I, luck is the second biggest thing. Second biggest. I don't know. I think here's the thing. Like we can under we, these things are true. Like hard work and self discipline are like pretty important, and luck is incredibly important in this system where hard work and discipline can get you almost nowhere. We have like I think a less than thirty percent social mobility, and people are working harder and producing more today than they ever have, and that social mobility is lower than it ever has been in the history of this country. People have hard work, people are self disciplined, but people aren't getting here to making their own future. Lots of people suffer. They grow up poor, they work poor, they become the working poor, and they die poor. Like that's a this is. This is a the vast majority of people in this country. Like 50% of, what is it? 50% of workers make like $30,000 or less in this country. They work hard and they have self-discipline. They just don't have this luck because luck is a really big portion of the pie. It's not just a little bit, it's really big. We don't know who have rich uncles we, that can give us like three thirty thousand dollars to start our own like fucking startup in San Francisco, chief. I'm sorry, it just doesn't work that way. Your own future. The left rejects this. Your group identity defines you, or to be more precise, predefines you. Only with the aid of the government can your identity group succeed. As an I mean, it helps out a lot. It helps out a lot. Now, you can be an outlier and you can succeed, but I don't think that you can sit here and say that like all these groups in the country tend to not succeed and then say that, I don't know, what do you, what do you want them to do? Suck it up, pull them up by their non-existent bootstraps because they don't have enough money to buy boots? Individual, you're powerless. Unless, of course, you're white. The left is even. Yeah, and like you could like that's luck. That's luck too. being born to like a richer family, being born to a family that's been able to pass down wealth and not being born to a, a family that's been through the history of this country, not been allowed to pass down wealth. That's luck. You're lucky. Congratulations. Do something good with it. Even change the way we seek social improvement. Whereas the abolitionist leaders of the 1850s and the civil rights leaders of the 1950s successfully appealed to America's conscience to right historical wrongs. Today's left rejects America's conscience as inherently corrupt. And if you don't fully buy into- What, what, what were we doing? Why were we doing all, the, all of those wrongs for hundreds of years? Is that not the conscious? I don't know. I guess it seemed like a really, it seemed like a weird semantic meme to be like, oh yeah, we were doing all of these horrible deeds for hundreds of years and genociding people, but that wasn't who we are. What? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it just, oh, oh, the thing that we were doing for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years that other countries weren't doing. Yeah, that's not us, though. OK, the left's plans for a new America. Well, be quiet about it. There are real consequences if you're not. 
whereas progressives once championed free speech, even at such extremes as Americans' right to burn the flag and publish pornography, they now enforce silence. Wait, I want to hear that again. Extremes as Americans' right to burn the There are real consequences if you're not. Whereas progressives once championed free speech, even at such extremes as Americans' right to burn the flag and publish pornography. Extremes! Extremes, extreme, like extreme things like posting booba and burning the flag. That's extreme. That's extreme. I thought doing things like being able to form a militia, like something that the that, that the right loves. They love to harp on that first part of the uh, Second Amendment, like literally putting together dudes with guns to like waddle into a federal building and shoot the place up. That's not extreme. But posting, but posting PP and booba. This is extreme. And burning a piece of fabric, that's extreme. Putting pee pee in poo poo hole, that is extreme. <laughs> Such extreme things like cooking toast and saying mean things to me on Twitter. Okay. Booba equal extreme. Koo equals chill. Yeah, that's true. So true, bestie. They now enforce silence, assert the biological reality of two sexes, reject apocalyptic environmentalism, or insist that citizens present an ID before they vote. Bro, what the fuck? It's lit, bro. They live there. Log off. Con conservatives log off challenge impossible difficulty. Log off, and these people literally disappear. They go. They disappear. Is it literally? I my free speech is being taken away because I'm getting ratioed on Twitter. I'm getting ratioed on Twitter, and this is it. My it is gone. I say that trans people are icky. I get ratioed. I say that in the environment is fine, and no matter how much trash I throw into the river, nothing bad happens. I get ratioed. I say that pe we should make it harder for people to vote, and I get ratioed. My free speech is gone, and you run the risk of being banned from social media. The it log off, log off. Isn't this like the entire conservative meme? Remember when like people on the left were talking so hard about like, what was it? Um, online harassment and online bullying. We, remember when like online bullying was like a really big thing in the anti-bullying movement and then conservatives were like, <laughs> you get bullied online, log off. And now, and now they get banned on the bird app and they're sitting here like bitching and moaning and shitting their pants. It's incredible to me. How like, what a baby. Log off. Log off. Go, go donate $30,000 to your favorite pack. That's going to do more for you than like tweeting. What's happening right now? Trump's the standard bearer of conservatism and his perma band. Yeah, that's true. That, that is, that is so true. Conservatism can't spread anymore because Donald Trump got banned from the bird app. It's so sad. This is literal oppression. Stop ratioing me. I keep getting ratioed, bro. My free speech is gone, man. I feel like I'm okay right now. Conservatives literally think they're like March on Birmingham is fucking opening up the bird app and saying like liberals suck pee pee and they get ratioed and they're like, bro, this is, I feel like fucking MLK. I, I feel like a, when they go, when they make these Prager U videos, they literally think that this shit is like letters from a Birmingham jail. I swear, <laughs> I swear they think they're so oppressed. It's incredible. Modern equivalent of the town square. You might also lose your job and your reputation. Is no. this America's future? You made someone's company look bad and you got fired because of it? No. The free market, bro. The free market. You got clapped. I'm sorry. That's what the free market is. The left says yes. The center left, the so-called liberal moderates, they're MIA. It's not clear what they believe. Conservatives take a different view. We recognize America's shortcomings, but we also see a nation always striving. Where did where did he recognize America's shortcomings anywhere in this? Anywhere in this video. Where, where did he recognize it anywhere in the video? What's happening right now? To become a more perfect union. We see a nation with more freedom, more opportunity, and more minority protections than any place on earth. That's what my immigrant parents. Canada? Europe? Okay, whatever. Oh, it's what their American-born son still sees. What do you see? I'm Bobby Jindal for Prager University. Thank you, Bo thank you Bobby Jindal. Thank you, Bobby Jindal, for your epic speech. I hope that you 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 get okay, Bobby Bobby Jindal. Okay. I hope they stop ratioing you on Twitter. I know it must be very hard for you. That must be so hard for you. It must be so hard for you. Oh my gosh, he keeps they keep ratioing him, man. I'm not sure how he's gonna fucking survive, dude. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's gonna make it out of this one. Oh my gosh.